Let's talk about content and links. Content and linking are the queen and king of, um, of SEO. Uh, these are the, of all of Google's ranking factors, and as you guys probably know, there's like literally hundreds of Google's ranking factors. These two are the best two. Um, so uh, with that in mind, let's talk about content first. So when you actually have attribution strategy in place, um, you can sort of essentially repeatedly use it to identify the greatest areas of, of um, opportunity in terms of ROI. So you can say, oh, this content campaign or this landing page led us to the most business, therefore we should really produce content surrounding that. Um, it is important to emphasize consistency, both in terms of usage and in terms of production um, when thinking about content. Um, when we used to work with some smaller businesses many years ago, we used to, you know, sort of remind them that, hey, if, if you don't put new content on your website, Google is evaluating, you know, what the likelihood that you are still in business. Uh, there's a lot of dead websites out on the internet, and the longer your website has gone without putting fresh content out, the more likely Google thinks that even though you might, your content might be effective or good, that you just might not be in business anymore. You haven't really given them any clear signals to say, oh yeah, we still do this, we're still focused on this. Um, and it's really easy for an active company to be working on a bunch of stuff and not worrying about content, and then find that, oh, we haven't really blogged in five months. If you haven't put any new fresh content on your website in five months, Google is gonna think there's a good chance you guys are just not doing this anymore. Um, and now, obviously this is like, more common for smaller businesses who who don't have the capacity to produce content. But if you're at a B2B company, um, you should have people who are who are essentially focused on producing content consistently and with proper usage. Um, and so uh, that's kind of why we talked about that at the very beginning with the best practices and things like that. Is um, you know having a streamlined process is really critical to giving Google a clear signal that says. Um, uh, that says, you know, we're, we're still in business and we're still targeting, you know, these critical components or these important things. Um, so uh, the sort of idea behind a scalable content strategy here is you're getting this great data piped in. Um, you're able to look at it and say, okay, these are the keywords and the campaigns and the landing pages that are the most profitable for us. Um, we have a, a streamlined content production process. So you, per, you, know, you people are going to be producing content for these pages based on these keywords and for these campaigns. Um, and then that shows both uh, this value to your consumers because they're getting like the targeted content that actually works for them. And Google is saying, ah, these people are consistently hammering on this, like these really, you know, well-defined, clear points. Um, we're going to value them more highly. We're going to rank them more highly. So it's important that you kind of refresh this process pretty consistently as the keywords change. Maybe your own data will indicate that, like, the market is now more interested in keyword B instead of keyword A. Um, and so uh, it's kind of it's a never-ending process. Um, but once you have this kind of workflow, uh, it can actually scale and grow as your business grows, as you attract new, new uh, different sort of products or things that you want to be selling, um, new consumer markets, things like that. Um, you can follow the data, no matter how big you grow or how far you expand or what you want to focus on, you can follow the data to give clear, clear signals to both Google and your team. Um, on the other side of this coin, um, we have uh, the, our linking strategy. Again, Data attribution is so amazing, it can give you a really clear uh, sense of, um, sorry, there's an <laughs> ambulance driving by, um, give you a really clear sense of, um, of how you want to drive uh, a linking strategy, how you want to find the best linking partners, who is actually linking to you in such a way that's actually leading to referral dollars, um, but also um, that we can sort of go through and find the best linking partners, people that we can uh, share content with, people that, uh, who have websites that are going to have kind of the right types of, of, um, of uh, domain rankings or things like that to connect with us. So um, this is probably the most difficult part of having this scalable strategy is getting uh, a sort of a functional linking machine to work. Um, but a few things to think about. Um, first of all, think about finding some good tools. Um, essentially, link development can often start to resemble sales. It can involve a lot of prospecting. Um, usually it's going to be something that you're going to want to outsource to specialists, but at the very least you should understand how the tools work. Um, essentially going through like 
there are tools that that crawl the internet both for um, like easy linking opportunities and the contact information or the type of information that you might need. So ahrefs.com is an awesome one for discovering link opportunities. Buzzstream is a great one for actually prospecting and reaching out to linking opportunities. Um, I would always, always recommend starting with link reclamations, um, the low hanging fruit of the link building world, uh, which is to say, Maybe somebody had a link on their website to yours, um, and then you moved a page as part of your website redesign, and now that link is broken. Um, or maybe they rearranged their website and they had a typo, or they forgot to they they didn't link something that was used to be linked. A broken link is the easiest to fix. All you have to do is either fix the URL on your own page, or contact them and say, "Hey, that URL on your page is busted. Can you you know put it to this one instead?" Um, those are super easy to go find, people are very receptive to fixing them. Um, having a, a process by which you are constantly checking for link reclamations is by itself really, really critical to keeping your link profile healthy. Um, and obviously Google sort of values your link profile pretty significantly. Um, another really great one are unlinked mentions. Um, it's really common for someone who has a blog in your industry to maybe reference your website and say, oh, we had, you know, you know, also at this panel was the speaker from so-and-so, uh, from, you know, viptella.com, who gave a great speech. Um, but if they don't link to uh, viptella.com in that blog, you're losing all that equity, even if they reference it. So all you have to do is just contact them and say, hey, I saw that you liked my speech, um, or the speech that so-and-so gave from our company. Um, would you mind just converting that into a, into a URL, into a link? Um, and uh, people are generally pretty, I mean, if they're writing about you and mentioning you, they're generally pretty receptive to that. So having a system that you can go through and uh, identify sort of, um, identify uh, link opportunities is really important. Um, it's sort of on its face, it doesn't need to be all that difficult. Uh, again, this can be somewhat time consuming, especially as we get to the next part, which is the content sharing part. Um, but it can be pretty time consuming, but in general, like you have to have some kind of a plan down on paper here and ideally one that's using attribution to identify your best partners um, and uh, and sort of the best uh, um, the best opportunities there. So um, this would be the linking part. Oh, the content sharing part before I move on. Um, so the other part of linking is sort of essentially having content production. If you get to the point where your content is so well produced and you feel so confident in your best practices, um, your team is like running pretty smoothly. Um, it's often a great idea to just basically have a backlog of content, maybe something like five to 10 pieces um, that you uh, are sort of could go on your blog if needed, but um, are available at any given time for uh, someone who might want to share content with you to produce links. Um, so rather than just being like, oh shoot, we, uh, you know, we need a blog, we wrote a blog, it's up on the site, etc. It's a good idea to say like, okay, we have a calendar, we have these 10 blogs that are scheduled to go out over the course of the next like month or, or two weeks or whatever it would be. Um, but if at some point our linking, our, you know, our link production team, um, you know, needs a piece of content to share with a, with a partner blog or with someone that we're going to be working with uh, in, uh, to develop links, then we actually have that content ready on hand. Really common problem we see is, you know, Oh, we're ready to produce links. Like, just send us a send us some content, and then your company says, "Oh, we actually don't have any content." And then it takes you a week, two weeks, three weeks to actually produce the content, and then by that point, the link opportunity has gone cold. 